Okay, everybody, I thought I would talk quickly about how to get stable diffusion running inside of Blender, uh, but not just running inside of Blender, but also running locally so that you don't have to pay money to use it. And it's it's actually a really fast. If you don't know what stable diffusion is, um, it is a artificial intelligence essentially that can make all of these images here are done because somebody put in some text and the computer said, this is what you want, right? And I mean, obviously these are very refined pictures from this uh, page, but the idea being that people who can't create art or don't want to create art, maybe they can, can create inspirational pieces, can create stuff for fun uh, with just a click, essentially, <laughs> just a click. Now, I'm not going to get into the big discussion of uh, everything that has to do with AI and image creation, which is moving quickly into video creation and animation creation. I think this is moving at breakneck speed, and there really isn't much anybody can do about it other than to learn and understand and be more knowledgeable. So that is the purpose of this video, is to become smarter. So as we become smarter, uh, we need to get on with things. So let's get on with it. So Stable Diffusion is that, and you can install this locally. I'm not going to get into that. Um, we are going to talk about installing the plugin that works with Blender, and uh, you can get that from GitHub over at Ben Rugg's page. Uh, AI Render is his project. I'll put the link in the description of this video so you can get there. And if you head down somewhere in the middle, it's going to say you can also download for free on the releases page if you want to hand some bucks to Ben Rugg. Then head over to Blender Market or Gumroad. But you can get it for free over on the release. So we'll click on the releases page. And in here is a zip file, and you're going to want to download this and install it as your add-on. Now, I don't know if I need to go into how to install an add-on. Essentially, you go into Edit, Preferences, and then you grab the this, this window, click Install, go find your zip file, and it will show up in your list, just like this one here. Render AI, Render Stable Diffusion in Blender. I guess that rhymes, doesn't it? I'm using... So I've got the latest version, 0.4.1, running, and I've got it running locally. So I also have an API key, and uh, that allows me to use Dream Studio's um, API, but that costs money, and what we want to do is not use that. So if you have Stable Diffusion installed, which you can look up, there's many YouTube tutorials on how to do it, the next thing you're going to want to do is grab your web UI-user.bat file. And you've probably already seen how to edit this. It's a very simple thing. I've barely done anything in here. Uh, I'm doing a git pull so I can grab the latest. I pause to see how it's looking. And then from there, we do some command uh, stuff here. So almost nothing going on in mine compared to what I've seen from other people do. But the most important thing we need to do is set command line args equals and then you need to put in dash dash API. You can have anything else after that, whatever you want to do. Dash dash is the is the uh, command that gets put in. So this is an argument within the command line when it starts up. And we want the API to start up. And this essentially allows Blender to talk to it. And we can put that in down below. It says enable rendering with local stable diffusion hit the check mark, it automatically goes to the place where we have stable, where stable diffusion installs um, by default. And once you put this in, uh, then it will no longer use the Dream Studio free uh, account, and it will use this one. So I don't use the Dream Studio one, I use just my local one now, so I've got mine running. And, uh, and we can see, I can actually see that all uh, right, let's see, let's go to here. See, I've got Stable Diffusion running right here. I was doing some playing around earlier with, with some images that it creates. 
And so this is stable diffusion. If you're, you know, you can learn, I'll do another video talking about this interface and everything we can do. There are other tutorials out there, check them out. But we want to talk about what happens in Blender. So once you've got this uh, set up in here, installed, and you've got this check mark done, you can just close this up. Now, in the, uh, in the Blender scene, we really don't have to do a single thing other than one thing, which I think makes this a little bit quicker. We're going to go into the scene and we're going to set the resolution uh, to 512 by 512. Now, this is a default size for stable diffusion. Um, if you use the actual web GUI, the GUI, graphical user interface, if you use this, you can set some different sizes up. But inside of Blender right now, we can only do 512 by 512. So next thing to do is head up into the um, render properties. And in here will be uh, AI render. And sorry, the previous one was the output properties. So we want to change the output to 512 by 512. Okay. So inside of the render properties, down here is going to be AI render. And we can enable AI render. Now, because we've already set our scene up to be 512 by 512, we go to the camera, we can see we are a block. Um, it's not going to ask us. So usually it says you got to set your scene up for 512 by 512. We've already done that, so we don't have that. Um, we can put in our prompt here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uncheck this apply a preset style because we, we don't need that right now. Let's, let's not bother. A preset style is essentially if you click on here, you get all these different uh, types of images you can get. But don't worry about that. Uh, leave that out for now. We're just going to go with the very basics that we can do. Inside of advanced options and operation, uh, are, are things you don't really need to change. Uh, you can. We're not going to do that right now. Actually, we might change one thing, and I'll, show, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, we want it to run automatically on render, and uh, you can save these things somewhere, but you can save them later as well, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so what we've got is we've got a cube sitting right in the middle, and I'm going to put a prompt in here, and it's going to essentially be something like cube surrounded, let's see, by... Uh, tiny ants in a grassy field. And we can put uh, macro photography. Photography. <laughs> and um, what else should we do? Maybe a 50 mil uh, lens. Um, let's see, how about we put in... Um, now oh, we can leave it at that. So now we've got a cube in here, and essentially we're going to tell the AI, use this cube as a reference to where the cube should be, the cube size. So say, for example, we were to select this cube and we were to scale it up and make it bigger. So this is how much bigger it should be in the image or make it smaller. It doesn't really matter. Your image, what you want to start with is this. Now, uh, quickly, we will talk about the advanced options. Image similarity is the point three is essentially going to set it up to be, uh, you know, look at this cube and, you know, make something like it. And, and that would be, uh, pretty good. If you put it any higher, it's going to make it a lot more like this cube. So point three allows for a little bit of creativity. Uh, the prompt strength at seven is, uh, how how close you want, as it says, how close you want the prompt to be followed, but how close you want it to look like your render. And then the sampler, um, these are different sort of uh, algorithms, I guess you could say, that get used to make stuff. I personally like to use Euler, Euler Ancestral. I really like it. Uh, a lot of people use LMS, but if it were me, I would recommend... Oh, sorry, it's Euler Ancestral, not Euler. I'm reading it. It's Euler Ancestral. So this, the second one down on the list, Euler Ancestral, is really nice, a good good little engine. You could use a LMS um, as well or even the DPM2 Ancestral. But I, I would say Euler Ancestral or LMS. So I'm going to go Euler Ancestral. And what we do is we just simply go to Render, render image and it's going to try to render something and if we bring my little window open that i've 
run uh, stable diffusion on, we can see it's doing some stuff and it's going to try to make this image here locally. So we know what's running locally and it says it's done and it created uh, a cube, no ants. Maybe there's an ant right in the middle here. So that's kind of interesting. So let's change these options here and let's let's put the prompt strength, let's put it down to five. So we're going to give we're going to give the AI a little bit of freedom to kind of play around with this idea. And so this is our render up here. It's just our cube. This is our actual render of a scene. And you can make any scene you want. And what it, I find that it does is it gives me a little bit of uh, inspiration on things that I could be making or some kind of scene that it could be. So look at that. It just made that. It looks like a piece of tofu or something like that. I'm not really seeing any ants. Cube. So let's put cube, comma. Let's put a comma in here. And sometimes our prompts can be surrounded by tiny ants. In a grassy field, macro photography, 50 millimeter. Let's leave it at that and run it again. And the cool thing is when you run this locally, you don't have to worry about how much, um, how many, how much you use it, how many images you make. It, it doesn't cost anything. So you get to play for free. And look at that. So we just still don't see any ants. I'm not really sure why. Let's, um, let's take out surrounded by cube, lots of tiny ants. Let's take out the word tiny, lots of ants <laughs> and uh, try again. Cause I really want to see some ants in this render. And this is the, the, the trial and error that you have to go through to find, um, images that you might want, <laughs> you might want to use. And we still don't have any ants. What is happening? So um, that's fine. Let's, let's take this, let's put the prompt strength up to 10 then and have it really listen to what we have to say. That 10 is quite high. Admittedly, seven, I think, is the normal. You go a little lower, it gets a little more creative. Ten, it gets a little bit more specific. It starts to really look at your prompt to be like, what should I be doing? We still do not have it. Maybe there's an ant over here. But now we've got like, what looks like to be a concrete cube. So finally, let's put a preset style in here. And I'm going to pick, let's pick steampunk. I'm actually enjoying steampunk lately. So we're going to pick steampunk and we're going to render one more time. But the coolest thing is, is you don't actually have to run stable diffusion uh, in the web GUI, which you probably will want to in the future, but you can run it straight inside of Blender. Look at that. It's come up with some cogs inside of there. That's really cool. Let's take this back down to four and just see what the AI thinks it should do with a cube with lots of ants in a grassy field, macro photography. It's almost done. There we go. We've got a hole inside of our cube that looks like it's machined brass, maybe. Not very, in a, let's put in a green grassy field. Actually, you know what we can do? So this is where, if we go into our layout and we shift A, add a plane, scale it up. Let's really scale this up. Let's grab the cube, move it upwards, and let's rotate it like this. And we're gonna take our plane at the bottom and we're gonna make it green. That's not what I wanted to do. I don't want a texture. I just want a color. So we'll go a nice bright green and we'll change over to there. Actually, let's not make it that bright. Let's darken that up a bit. Okay. And then we'll make our cube. Let's, um, let's make it a purple cube and see. So yeah, that's pretty good. Render, render image. Okay, so now we've got a cube, the light off to one side, big shadow on a green plane. We're looking for grass. Ooh, weird. You never know where you're going to get. Okay, so let's change our prompt strength back up to, let's go for the average of seven, see what it does. Render, render, image. Try again, see what it does. 
But I really like that it's inside a blender because I know that there's a lot of times where I'm playing around and I just don't get any image or composition that I really want. And when I can modify stuff inside a blender like this, and I can, I can change the composition and the objects that are in it. If we want an ant in here, we might want to make, we might want to model a basic ant, put it down on the ground and then duplicate it five or 10 times and see what it does. So we're still going for this um, steampunk effect. Let's head over to, hmm, let's try surreal. All right. And render image. Now these presets inside of here were determined by Ben. He's put them in to just try to help out the prompt. Essentially just add stuff onto the prompt. You could write this stuff in and it would be, hey, we finally got our ant. <laughs> it's about time. Um, we still got a purple cube and we got a little bit of a graph. Anyways, the point is inside of Blender, I find it really powerful because we can determine our own composition or objects that are inside of it. And then if you wanted to pick a style, you can. If not, don't pick a style. If we pick no style. We'll see what it does. And and it will the, the, the machine will just kind of think of some stuff. And I find that fascinating, very inspiring. So... There we go. Macro photography, cube inside of some grass. We still don't have any ants, but whatever. <laughs> you get to play with it. So give that a go. Hopefully that's helped some of you out there uh, on how to use this with Blender and why you might want to use it. And uh, the one setting that you need to change, which is literally just putting in a dash dash API, restart stable di stable diffusion, and... Um, and, and, and you'll be good. It should just work. So there you go. That's it for this one. I'll cover some more stuff very soon, and I'll see you guys then.